Hi everyone, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Today we're doing another pet portrait for one of my customers on my Etsy site. This is our dog today. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the breed is. If I figure it out, I'll post it over my head or on my arm or something and, and you'll be able to know as soon as I do. All right, let's get started. I have a toned canvas right here that I have put the drawing on first in graphite, sprayed it with hairspray, and then wiped out the highlights. If you'd like to see a clip of that, I'll post it at the end of this video so you don't have to watch it all right now, but you can watch it at the end of our painting session to know how we got to this point. Let's get started. I have um, on a gray palette, this is a Gray Matters disposable palette, I have a titanium white, uh, raw sienna, Naples yellow, an indigo blue, and a perline maroon, one of my new favorite colors. And, oh, don't forget, I have some Neo Megilp, which is a medium that just makes the paint go a little bit smoother. I'm going to work my darks first, and coming up into the ear, I've mixed a little of that indigo and the red color for, uh, it just gives me a really dark value, and I can go back in and figure out where uh, some of these very, very dark places are on the canvas. And so here we go. I've got some in here, and uh, there's just a few places. This, is, is, this dog has some black and some uh, more tan colors. Um, and then, of course, there's just the shadow. This is a warm, it almost feels like a warm black. So it's got a red and a blue. It's very deep purple. If I add a little bit of white to that, let's see what that color really is. That's about the same as what we've got in our background, just a little darker. I gotta pick this up a little so you can see it. Is that better? Yeah, you can see the bottom part. Because every part of this canvas is important. Um, we're filling up the canvas with the dog's face. I like to do uh, portraits of dogs um, uh, that have just more of the face and less of the rest of the body because after all, the face is really the most important part of the dog. Now I'm gonna take a smaller brush uh, go in with the indigo again, and we'll find where the nostrils are. First off, I'm going to split the nose again. This is what I usually do. And then we go um, up at the top. We decide where the top of the shadow is right here. And then, of course, my usual uh, number six and the reversed letter J back here. So I've got, that's how I, I kind of um, divide the nose up. And then I'll put uh, almost an arrow at the bottom. It is an arrow at the bottom, so we start, we just figure out where that arrow goes, the, the top of where the shadow changes directions, and the number six and the letter J right here. Okay, now that's about, uh, let's see, we'll go back in here, and uh, I'm, I'm having to make up this part of the ear because the uh, photo was cut off slightly, so, oops, I think I've got that up too high. So. This is where your trusty rag comes in. You don't want to chop his head off. That's not good. Now, I'm, I'm going to uh, delve into a little bit of a warmer color now, which is our raw sienna with a little bit of medium, and uh, put a little bit of that color underneath. And again, I still got a little bit of the red on my brush. That's okay. Uh, and you don't want it just a solid color like you're painting by number. That doesn't ma make any sense. It doesn't make a good painting when you have just patches of solid color, unless that's your thing. Okay, there's a patch over the dog's eye that is in this raw sienna color. And then some along here. So I'm just establishing where the color changes are in the dog's face. And I'll go back in with the darker color. Uh, most, a lot of the time, I will just work from dark to middle tone to light. Uh, there are days when I just don't feel like doing that. And uh, I'm going to put an indication of the dog's legs, just so he doesn't look like a floating head. I, I've actually, because it's been photographed from way up above, the dog's legs look like toothpicks. So I, I've adjusted them and made them larger so it doesn't look weird, too weird. Okay, now the next thing uh, we'll get in here to, I'm gonna 
face out a little bit of that blue color again with the red and some, let's see, more blue, more blue this time. And we'll put the blue on the back of the dog here. A little more blue, indigo, rather than using black, which is a very dead color. Black is just, it just doesn't uh, work for me too much. I, if, I, if I use a black, I'm not going to worry about this here. If I use a black, I will add something to it, like a red or a blue, um, to warm it up. Or even, even some of this raw sienna, if I add that to the black, it will make it a little more lively. And um, so, okay, so now I've got some raw sienna with our, our blue, and I'm basing out this ear. I think it comes out more triangularly. Once you get the drawing down and, and the tonal values established, it's amazing how fast the dog portrait will go, because that's really the hard part. Putting a little bit of that dark value as the nose uh, splits around the mu muzzle, and then some dark, warm dark. This is raw sienna with uh, the indigo blue up in here and around the eye just a little bit. It's, a, it's almost a middle black. It's not super dark. And then we'll, we'll cool this down on the top of the head right here with a little bit of the indigo blue. Anyway, it's just kind of a gray blue uh, and a little bit of the um, raw sienna. I'm going to add a little white to that, indigo blue and raw sienna. And then we'll lighten up this area around the eye right here. And it looks like about the color of what's happening on the nose or the bridge of the nose and across the actual nose part right here. Yeah, that's a good, good, good highlight for the black nose is the indigo, uh, indigo with, with raw sienna with white. And I'll put it here and maybe a little bit right here. Yes. Now I'll make it even lighter. Raw sienna, indigo, and white. And we'll hit that kind of a light part at the top of the head. Where else do I see that? Oh, I see it down here. I don't want to get too much into the last bits of the fur before we get the whole thing moving at one time. Now, this ear up here is actually into the raw sienna, and we're going to have to adjust the background so that we can see all these things. So this has to be darker so that the light part of the head will stand out, and the light parts have to the light, the lighter background sets off the dark part of the, the dog. So here's a little light here, a little light here, light here, and where else do I see it? Okay, let's get really, really, really light at the top of the ear up here, and then some here. And I want, uh, I'm taking some Naples yellow hue. When it says hue, it just means it's not quite as strong as if you have a full on color, a pigmented paint. It's, it's usually just a little uh, less of the pure pigment when it says hue, but I find it works. It's less expensive usually. Most of my Naples yellows are in hues for some reason. Okay, now let's get this uh, part of the nose as it comes down like this. And I could actually use kind of a light purple in that zone uh, a little bit later on. Remember that the light is sort of coming down from up here and a little on this side, and it's casting a shadow. His face is casting a shadow right here, and then uh, the light comes, it bounces off uh, behind, and then um, the hair is created over on this side. All right. Okay, back to our indigo and raw sienna, and we're going to go underneath the eye here, and it's in a middle kind of, a, not, not super dark, but, but pretty dark. And while I have that on my brush, I'm going to put some of that inside the ear. Sometimes it helps to have two different photo references or two or three different photo references so that you get the coloring right. And uh, anything that you can't see, you can kind of establish by um, looking at the other photos. All right, this is a little bit lighter right in here. 
So I put a raw sienna and white, and there's a marking here like that. And then it's very light around this part of the muzzle. Okay, so how am I going to get the top of this head to really stand out? I'm going to give this a little bit of a, a lighter, uh, cooler color, meaning, uh, actually, let's do a little bit of that light blue. So now indigo with just uh, white. Let's see what happens when I do that. Oops, maybe a little more white. I really want this to stand out. Uh, so let's, let's just do that. Yeah, that's good. That's about right. And then there's this triangular uh, shape over the eye that is in that light blue. And right here, and then around the eye. I know it's bugging you a little bit that I haven't got these eyes put in. Maybe we should do that. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take a smaller brush right now and uh, establish that I've got, um, let's see, let's put in our, our perline red, perline maroon for the eyes, and we'll kind of get just the eyeball put in with the perline red. And if I, if I swirl my brush around and I think, okay, what size is each one? And I, I get a rhythm going so that I know that I'm sort of getting a, the same size. It's a bit of a challenge. Now I'll go in with some of the, the light gray made by the indigo. And we'll put that little highlight in just so that you feel more comfortable. There we go. That's cute. And then around the eye, it's very, very dark. So I'm going to go back to the perline maroon with the indigo and, and put a dark rim around the outside of the eye. What shape do you think that is? It's, it comes down, there's a little um, area that points down this direction, and then this one is slightly, because the head's slightly turned, it's just slightly different. And you really can't generalize it. You need to really look at what you're doing. Don't just say, oh, here's two eyes, you know, that doesn't work. All right, then I'll use that same dark and, and split that, uh, that head that goes down. The dog's head is, you know, obviously split into two sides, and so uh, often there really is a line almost that, that splits the dog. Let's go back in first and before we get into too much more and, and begin to move these two pieces together of the nose. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle back and forth like that. And then I'll go back in. I don't want the, the front part of the nose to be darker than the nostrils. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the nostrils. So the nostrils are the darkest part. And then this, it becomes kind of a dark shadow uh, as it comes forward away from the light. And then, of course, the top of the nose is in the light. So. Um, you have to kind of maintain that a little bit. And then it's darker right behind, right here, so that we can see where the nose begins. And I'm just taking my brush and kind of working it around a little bit and, and merging the tones together. I'm going to wipe my brush off a little bit so it's a little, little cleaner. And then I'll, I'll take those shapes and take the edge of each particular shape and begin to wiggle them together into the next shape. I don't blend the whole thing out. That would be silly. You would lose everything. So you want to, you don't just take a big brush and blend everything out. You have to, you have to take the edge, like, like this. Okay, if I take the edge of this particular piece and I make tiny little zigzags between the two colors, um, it will it'll merge them without losing the distinctiveness of each particular shape and color. Okay, that's coming together. Now, I want to put just a little more of a highlight uh, now into the eye with white. And I put the highlight on, even if I don't see it in the dog, in the photo, I'm going to put the highlight on the same side. We're in line with the light, okay especially if you're doing people. But dogs, often you'll see the highlight going all different directions. But uh, I tend to like to put them in the same, the same side. Now I'll go back in with my darks and fix up 
some of these um, shadows that go back up and over that give the expression of the dog and just kind of work out some of the details. Now, how am I going to make that highlight at the top of the head even better? I'm going to take my pearling red. They, the customer wants a dark red background. So I'm going to put that pearling red or pearling maroon behind, and I will darken the area over where the highlight is. Then as it moves into the other light, I may use something different. I think I'll, I'm going to use more of um, an orange color or a cadmium red light to emphasize the light part of, of the background. So this part of the leg has got a, a light highlight on it. This is a lighter leg, and so I will put, let's, let's grab some of that, um, the lighter, uh, yeah, raw sienna, and a little bit of Naples on here. In order to lighten the red, I don't add white. If I did, I would end up with pink, and I don't really want pink. I'd like to have a lighter version of red. So I'm adding cadmium red light to the pearling maroon in order to get this kind of a, a nice lighter uh, red feel as though there is light coming through, and yet it, it maintains the, the, um, the red. Okay, I can even move it up into the orange a little bit, but let's see if it works, if it's light enough. I'm going to shape out this little shape between the dog's head and the background, and then move this over here, see if I can get this shape just right. Make sure that dog's ear's right. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the dog. I can feel it. That's all right. It makes it feel like it's all part of the same painting. When you kind of, and then you wipe your brush off whenever you hit the dog. Because <laughs> look what happens. It gets all messy. Okay. If I want this to look even brighter as it's coming through, I might add a little bit of the yellow color, like the yellow, Naples yellow. Let's test that out. Now, this is the light side of the dog's face, so I can go back into the pearling maroon and come back in with that and go alongside and shape out any of the, oops, we need to get that dog's flippy doo ear in. Just a sec. This part needs to be light because this is the dark part of the ear, but the, the side of the face is dark, so we have to go back in and put in the dark around the face and uh, over the leg, and then it'll go into, oh, I think it goes into a little bit of the dark red there. And then, because the ear is very dark right here, I'm going to go back in with the light color around the dark. Light against dark, dark against light. All right, now let's see if we can get that ear to where we can see it. Yeah, there. Inside of the ear has this kind of a little thing there going. And then we have a white chest down here. That'll help. A little bit of white chest. Nice. There we go. And then the top of the dog's leg has got a little bit of a light right there and right there. That'll, that'll bring it out a little bit. And we'll take that highlight again, and uh, while we've got that light on our brush, and lighten up some of these uh, colors that are a little bit on the dark side. Now, I'm going to uh, work on this for a little bit. I'll finish up the details. Oh, I'll, before I do, uh, I want to think about what color is this light down here. And it's, it's kind of a cool color, so I'm going to go back into my, my indigo and I'll do the highlights on the dark black fur with indigo mixed with a little bit of white. And that works really well on black fur. You want to try to get a little bit of that, that cool highlight for uh, black fur. Otherwise, it can change the, the color of the fur to something else. I'll turn it into a brown fur if you put the wrong, uh, the wrong highlight on it.
All right, I'm going to work on this for a little while and I will show you the end result. Be right back. All right, a little bit of time has passed. Yes, about four days actually. I had to allow the first layer of paint, which was really, really wet and soupy, to uh, dry for about three days. And then I was able to go in with a smaller detailed brush and do all of the, the details and the glazing and that sort of thing. It took about an additional three hours. Wow, yeah. So I don't think you really wanna watch every last brush stroke. Maybe some of you do. Uh, maybe some of you who are suffering from insomnia would like to watch that, but uh, I'd like to give you the information and let you loose to try it on your own, all right? And don't forget to subscribe because then you'll be notified when I do my next video, which might be a floral, a still life, or maybe even a cow. Who knows? Make your suggestions below and we'll see which ones get done next. Yeah. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Today, I'd like to show you basically step two of what I do in the middle of painting a dog portrait. This one is just a tiny one. It's a 10 by 10 um, oil on canvas. It will be. And the canvases are those thick ones that are wrapped around the side. Now, here's a photo of the dog right here that I've worked from. I sat down in front of the TV and drew this with uh, graphite or pencil and then I sprayed it with hairspray, all right, some aerosol hairspray and that fixes it down for our next step. Now the customer would like a red background and a dark red and so what I am using today with a lot of thinner is a cadmium red dark mixed with a little bit of dioxazine purple, okay? Those two colors, I'm hoping, will give it kind of a rich dark red tone. Yeah, I like it a lot. And all I'm doing is I'm putting a coating of this dark cadmium red deep mixed with a little dioxazine purple onto the background, actually onto the entire thing. And I know that's very, very scary but uh, you'll see what I'm doing in a second. Now, hopefully, if I've sprayed it down enough, I will not lose my drawing. And that's, that's the scariest part for most of my students when they're watching. It's like, ah, you put on all this work and then it's going to just go away. But it doesn't really. Okay, and uh, normally I would do all the sides. I'll get back to that in a little bit. So I take a Viva towel now and I will rub that down this is kind of in a maroon. And then I will rub the sides of the canvas and get it, uh, take the paint from the canvas and rub around, completing all the sides. Okay, so now, looking at my photograph and the canvas, I will dip my little um, paper towel in some, some odorless thinner, and I'm going to begin taking out the areas that I think are light. Now I've got a light underneath the ear right here in the background and I'll just leave the darks. If it's a dark part of the dog, I leave the part of the, the dog dark and I will take out the background a little bit. And let's see, we've got the dog's body is kind of coming out like this. And then I'll flip it to a clean side and I will take out a little bit of the shine on the eyebrow, a little bit of the ear. Oops, I need to make sure I've got thinner on it. The thinner will take it right down to almost where it was and as far as the canvas color, so I have to be careful if I don't want that. And here's a light part of the nose and around the muzzle. This is a, a really great way to do things, uh, do a lot of, uh, of art uh, just by, by just illuminating the first part or getting, okay, this is a really good way to, to start a painting in the best of times because you already know where the lights are supposed to go. 
you're not having to think about color and all that kind of stuff. You're just thinking about what's happening um, in the lights and the darks. Now I'm going out from underneath the ear a little bit. I might have to expose a little bit more of the drawing so I can see what it what it's actually doing. I'm leaving the leg. I've got a little bit of the leg. This is one of those distorted photographs where the head looks bigger than the body because you're looking from up above. But I, what I did was I made the legs just a little bit longer than they really are, not longer, wider than they were on the photograph because the photograph is weird, all right? And now I'm going to take out the light around the darkened ear, right like that. And the dog is beginning to come out. There's a little bit of the eyebrow part and there's a little tubular looking bit on the dog there. Okay, now I'm going to use some Q-tips uh, to get in some of the details. I just dip it in. I have a little can of thinner and I dip my Q-tip in a can of thinner. Oh, need my towel. And then I can go back in uh, with the Q-tip and go in and maybe put uh, take out some of the lighter parts of the dark fur right here around the ear and I'll dab it with a towel so that it comes up just nicely. You know you don't have to get too carried away with it, it just is a, a, an information tool. But you can also, uh, it might be a fun one to, um, to use as a, a final product too. I mean it doesn't have to, it would be an interesting way of doing a piece of art. You can kind of work on this uh, for several hours because the paint will uh, still be workable. You can uh, work on it for sheesh three hours if you really want or you can just go to painting it. it it'll be dry enough to paint but you can still remove things with thinner for a long time. In fact, I've heard of people actually doing it overnight and coming back the next day and working on it. So uh, it's a very flexible tool. Isn't that interesting how you can make this really kind of jump up before you even hit it with paint. It's awesome.